keeping um, the word out there as much as possible, I think, is really important. Thanks. That concludes this part of our presentation, talking about some of the practical challenges of establishing a health justice partnership and some smart ways to get around those challenges. In the next part of this presentation about setting up a health justice partnership, we're going to talk about how you measure and demonstrate effectiveness. So we're joined again by Dr Nicole Woodrow from Royal Women's Hospital and by Linda Gyorke from Inner Melbourne Community Legal. And I'd like you to kick off by telling us about um, evaluation and what have been some of your approaches and um, whether they've worked in this very new space of partnering between legal and health workers. Sure. Get you to kick that off. Sure, you? no worries. So um, we have, we're in the process of doing our second evaluation. The first evaluation we conducted was um, between 2012 and 2014 um, for our work at the Women's Hospital and it was done by Melbourne University and in particular by um, Professor Kelsey Hegarty, who's a Professor of General Practice at Melbourne University and Professor Kathy Humphreys, who's a Professor of Social Work. Um, and they were Part of our health justice partnership at the women's has also been to provide uh, training on the um, on identifying and responding to family violence and we run a full day study day at the women's hospital called the acting on the warning signs study day so a key component of that evaluation was um, evaluating the training specifically and whether or not it had an impact on um, the practice of frontline health professionals in responding to disclosures of family violence um, but they also looked at the Health Justice Partnership and the impact that it was having. Um, and if anyone wants to read that report, I'm very happy to um, forward it to them. Um, in now, we're now um, conducting a further evaluation. Our evaluation officer at the legal service is evaluating our work at the Women's Hospital. Um, and but this time we're fortunate that we've also developed partnerships with the Royal Children's Hospital and Royal Melbourne Hospital. And so we're conducting a cross-site evaluation across the three hospitals, which is looking at a number of different things, but predominantly at um, whether or not the clients that we see at the hospitals would have seen a lawyer had the lawyer not have been on site. Um, and if not, why not? And whether or not the legal intervention has had an impact on the client's health or wellbeing. And that report will be available probably around March next year. The evaluations are really important, obviously, um, for health professionals. They're really important for funding um, to as a rationale for what's going on in the hospital, for future research directions. Um, and certainly in terms of the education sessions, that, um, and that was evaluated by F Professor Hegarty, um, it was very important. It all became part of an accreditation for um, junior doctors and uh, midwives and obstetricians. And in fact, um, the Royal Australian College of Obstetrician Gynecologists gave us some lovely continuing education points for that. So that was uh, obviously high standard and uh, it's vital. Audit of this sort is absolutely vital. Um, oh, I might make a very quick point. Um, I think it, um, what we wanted to do in the initial stages is meet with the, the partners and our evaluator and other key stakeholders to make sure that we had a really clear idea of the objective measurables from the start so that we could collect information throughout the three years. So um, we knew what it is that we wanted to get information on. I might also just add that um, if you are doing an evaluation through a hospital or um, or your evaluation requires ethics approval, which all of our evaluations have required, um, don't es underestimate the amount of time ethics approval takes um, and make sure that you allow yourself plenty of lead in time to account for that as well. Yeah. 